welcome to another episode of Cat's Cradle Forge. Today, we're going to be working with raw iron. We're going to be trying to make a ring. We're going to drift that raw iron. Then we're going to etch it to get all the cracks and stuff in it. I've been wanting to do this for a while because I think it would look so freaking cool. Well, let's get started. Got my piece of raw iron in there. I'm drifting the hole very aggressively. I already tried one and it's splitting. So I'm trying another one farther down to see what luck I have. And I can see that hole right here. Ooh. No mercy. Great. There's a fire going to happen now. No. Well. So we have that problem. Ha! Huh. And now we don't. Okay, we got a, we're getting a good size hole there so far, and we're not getting the cracking. That's a good thing. Looks like we need a new handle for my my hot set here. Back in the fire. Oh, you squirrely bitch. Forgive me, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a little impatient. Been out here for like six hours making all sorts of crap, and my feet are frozen numb. I'm trying to hurry it along a little bit. Film this first part of this video for you. As weird as it seems, I have the hole punch in there too. I'm not going to make it too hot. I'm just going to get it hot enough where it doesn't cool down the piece. I want the inside to stretch and I don't want it to stop and then crack because if it cools off too quick, that's what's going to happen. Wrought iron can be a royal pain in the ass for an amateur like me who's trying to get used to dealing with its craziness. We're getting there. Little bigger. Now the reason why I did it farther up instead of right on like a, a square piece like I do all the other rings is because raw iron will just split right in half. It's like spaghetti. So if you try to drift like a round hole in a, in, a, in a flat flat stock or cube, try to drift a round hole in that, you're going to get cracks. And you can't have a ring that's cracked. I want the cracks in there, but I don't want it like broken. You know what I mean? All right, so what I'm going to do now that I got the, the hole drifted, fits the person's finger perfectly. Um, could use a little sanding out, but that's good. And now we're just going to lop off all this excess and start profiling the ring. Just going to make a cut real quick. Alright, so what I'm going to do now that I got that kind of cut, I got this tab because I know it's going to get hot when I start working this and I, I don't want to burn myself over and over and over again and keep cooling and cooling and cooling it. 
So I'm going to hold on to this here tab and work that face down. I want a flat surface to etch something on. Yeah. Or I just want to leave it that brutal. So it could be a punch you in the face ring. I don't know. I don't know. Self-defense ring. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Well, back to grinding. All right. So I've got this roughly profiled. I've got a flat surface to work with. Ah, uh, yes. Time to etch something. Welcome to the new Cat's Cradle Forge corporate offices. This is where all the magic happens, where all the videos are edited, where the channel is made. It comes complete with this makeshift smoking room I made right in front of the window so that I don't bother to any of my co-workers with secondhand smoke. Here you can see everything set up for etching or any other stuff I have to do right now. We'll be etching this heart into this ring. This should be plugged in. Alright, so the etching didn't work. You can kind of see a rough outline of the heart. And uh, the paint just kept coming off. I don't get it. It wouldn't stay on the metal. That's the first time I've ever had that happen. Then, so, so I'm just gonna cut it in by hand with the Dremel and file work it. See what happens. So I got that kind of Dremel cut and filed in there. I'm going to keep going until it's really prominent sticking out. And then I'm just going to shape the rest of the ring away, leaving the heart. So, this is what I've got so far. Now we're going to take it into the garage, or the workshop, and uh, grind off all the excess and profile it a little more. Be right back. Alrighty, so we're back in from the shed and uh, I've got this roughly profiled now it's time to really do some fine tuning with hand sandpaper, with the files, and with the Dremel. Get this inside rounded off, get it ready for an etch, and some vinegar. See if we can expose some of those raw iron cracks. Alright, so I did a lot of work in hand sanding and everything, getting it down to this point. And I painted the heart again. Now we're going to drop it in some regular vinegar and let the vinegar do its magic to the wrought iron for however long it takes. But first I'm going to wipe it down with some acetone to make sure my fingerprints don't prevent it from corroding at it. Alright, now it's clean. I'm not touching it with my hands, of course, because the fingerprints will keep it from etching. What's the matter, Peach? I'll just let that 
do its work. All right, so I got this on the stove, cooking it, and you can see it reacting like crazy, eating away at that metal everywhere but the heart. That's going to be chrome, if I can. So, after the vinegar bath, this is what it looked like. I wasn't satisfied yet. Luckily, the ferrochloride came in, but not in time to make this a Valentine's episode. So here's the ferrochloride. My lovely assistant obtained it from the internet. And now, we will see what it does. All right, there it is. Looking all like Coca-Cola that went flat. Now we wait to see what happens. And here it is. You can see all the lines of the wrought iron. The heart is nice and shiny. You can see yourself in it. It looks like it's ancient. Some of the cracks opened up a little there. And now all we gotta do is dip this here horn in that stuff and see how it comes out. I don't know. To see that on the next episode, maybe. If I'm not doing the, uh, smelting. Thank you for watching Cash Cradle Forge and have a wonderful day.